Okay, so we're gonna do procedural slime today. A long time ago, maybe about a year and a half ago or something, I was browsing Instagram and I saw this effect in my feed. That was pretty cool. Uh, and then, you know, here's some other kind of ideas of what we're kind of going for, this kind of like gooey nonsense. Now with the new Blender versions, like way past 3.0 and now we're in 4.0, there's other nodes that we can do to make this effect even better, I think. And so I think we're gonna try to do the same idea. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take objects and then instance essentially slime on them to make sure that we get them to kind of have them connect. So we're, we're gonna do that through curves and things like that. Anyways, let's jump right into it. We have the blank scene. We need to do two things before we get started, I guess. We need to do a new collection for the objects we want it to interact with. So we should have an icosphere. And let's do, let's do Zan. And let's do one more. Uh, let's do a cylinder, cool. And this could go up here. We grab all of these, push M, new collection, and we'll say, uh, interactive objects and then this cube is going to be the geo slime ball cool so we got a geometry nodes new new system here we are pull in the collection and just like before we have to realize these instances realize instances boom it's real geometry relative so we can move them all around this is still here and then Actually, we don't need to actually pull this into a, a join. So now we have this, and now we gotta put the different uh, curves on the, the slime object. So let's say um, distribute points on faces. Now we have a join geometry to pull this back in. And then on all of these different faces, we can choose the density, whatever. This is probably pretty good. We're gonna instance a curve. So. Uh, instance on points, boom, it's all gone. And we're gonna do the curve, that way we have those kind of hair effects. So curve, line, boom. Now this next part you don't need to do, but it's just good practice, I do it every time, because it just, I don't know, looks more correct. It doesn't matter, because we're gonna be uh, moving the end point anyway, so who cares, but it's nice to see just for general good practice. Line rotation to vector, exactly. Pop this puppy in, normal to here, boom. Now they're all pointing out to the normal. And so then we have this, we have here, cool. Then let's move all of these endpoints to the nearest part on any of the faces. So how can we get the face of any of these shapes? So what we can do is we have this uh, geometry right here. We can do sample nearest surface and a surface counts as the faces. We can then do a vector for the position because that's what we care about is the positional data of this, right? So we're gonna put this in here and here. So now we have the position of any of the surfaces of this group of instances, right? Well, not instances anymore. This group of geometry, which is these three meshes. So now we have the value of the the, the position going out, and the sample position would then be. Um, we'll use that later to kind of add some noise. So then we're going to set position of what the end point selection, and I think it's just if we do this, we got to realize these instances too. There we go, boom. And so then the effect basically is working right now. So as we move it around, we're gonna get this to kind of like clamp on to whatever. And what's good too, is if we go into wireframe mode, you can see it's stopping on the actual surface itself. Uh, so that's good. So we're seeing all of these kind of points shifting around, which is nice. Hooray, tutorial is over. Not yet. <laughs> Anyways, so we have this here, and now we're gonna add that noise to shift it around. So then we're going to capture an attribute of these faces. We're gonna have it be the position vector of this, maybe like this, just to make it really work correctly. Maybe it can do points. So this is changing how it's connecting on the surface. Uh, but then we wanna add noise, so noise, White noise, no, it's just noise texture. Every time I want to say white noise. Vector math, pop this in, subtract the 0.5 to keep it centered on that one spot. And then we're going to add in this. So if we put this here, and then we increase the scale, this should 
This should do it. Mm -hmm. There we are. Less overall noise. Okay. So now what are we seeing here? We're seeing that we added noise to the positional data right here. So this is noise. Remember, it's like a, like a fluffy cloud of just like uh, information and all the XYZ coordinates. And we're adding noise to that, keeping it centered on the normal, then scaling that noise, adding it in to put it into the sample position. So what this is doing is it's making it these different uh, curves think that different spots are actually closer than they really are. That way we kind of get these branches not all going in the same place. Push like this. It's all going to go right there. So if we have it to be like five, then we're going to get different ones going depending. And what's nice too is this is all positional, so we can kind of get this pushing out and back. The base effect is essentially done now. Now we got to add noise to the system of curves to make it look not as terrible. So what do we have right here? We have this doing the set position. So let's group all of this right here and let's call this. Um, Let's call this a uh, curve like touching system. Good enough. So now that we had the base effect done, what we need to do is add a few more set positions to add some noise and different movement inside the actual curves themselves. And some maybe uh, some endpoint selection and stuff like that to make sure we only affect the, the points we care about. Do a resample curve. We're gonna add three points. So all that's doing is it's adding a point in the middle and that point we can pull down just to kind of give it a fake gravity effect. So we're going to do endpoint selection. So endpoints go from the, the tail ends of the curve. You're seeing, <laughs> I'm holding my hands out as if you can see me. What does endpoint selection mean? It just means it's like taking the, the first point at the start and the first point at the end. This would be second point. So if we do this and we do a Boolean math, so we know this is the ends and we have three points. So that means the middle point is the one we want. So we say not this, this is the selection. And if we offset this, we get just that middle point. Isn't that cool? And if we increase this to be more, we would get more points moving. But right now, let's just do the middle point to make it easy. We can say minus one. So now we have this shifting down uh, into the Z axis. So we can say here, fake gravity. Nice. Add another set position. I think it's Alt-P, pull out of the frame. And then we're gonna do the same, Control-C, Control-V, boom. Okay, so then we're gonna do another same thing with the same set position. But we're not doing that. We're gonna resample, resample curve. Now let's do by length now, and let's say, sure, point one's okay. So now again, we're not impacting the initial point. What we want to do is then kind of smooth it out and we're going to do that with a blur attribute. And then what we're going to offset is I guess just the general positional information. And we can say vector here, offset. Uh, uh, uh. I guess we put it in the position, it doesn't matter. Nice. Now we're getting these little curvies. So anyways, the problem is you don't have the catcher attribute. You wanna just pump the position directly into the editing the noise, as well as just right into the sample surface. And then we're gonna get a much better view of uh, point distribution. This may be too much noise. Let's pull it back a little bit. The blurred attribute right here. So this is resampling based off of the length of, of the actual curve to kind of get a more even view and kind of pulling it down to get it a bit more uh, natural. So we can pull down a bit further if we really want to. This looks okay, looks reasonable. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some noise to the, the actual curves themselves. So we're gonna group this. This is gonna be smoothed droop. And then we're gonna add another set position with the same thing. Control, Control Shift D, Alt P. We don't need this position in. And then this is gonna go here and here, boom. And then we're gonna add noise. Noise texture as an offset. Pop it in, vector math, minus 0.5, same, same. Scale, we pull down this. That's a lot. That's very fluffy. You can say two, maybe one. 
And then I got a blur attribute too as well. If I can type correctly, blur attribute here, vector, pop it in. That's reasonable. And what's nice too is if you do it on 4D dimension, like uh, 4D noise, you can then uh, do hash frame to make it a driver, and you can just divide it by 100 and push play. And with time, it kind of goes back and forth. Do we like that? Too slow, too fast? Uh, I think we have a lot of instances. So let's just pull this down density. Let's just say like 50. This should make it play a bit a lot faster. And it's responding. So now we have a bit of, of uh, motion with the, 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 the 4D noise to kind of make it move around. So we'll call this wiggle. Wiggle effect. Cool. And then back down here, let's add some noise as well. 40 frame or hash frame, let's say a thousand. Then we're gonna get these to kind of move up and down, like it's kind of following it around. Perfect. We have the fake gravity to pull it down, the smooth drop to make sure it kind of is not just an abrupt shift. And so then we have the wiggle. And then now we have to do is just remesh this into curve. Remesh or curve to mesh, uh, curve circle. That way we have the profile curve for it. Let's say 16 to make it small, 0.05 maybe. Curve radius. And now we're gonna add this to like mesh it all together. So we're gonna curve radius and we're gonna use the spline parameter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the factor, set it here, and we're gonna do a float curve to set it so it goes from small to big and big to small. Dippy dip there, make it a bit bigger. Now it's already kind of looking like blobby tentacles. If you move it around, the frames go to zero, there's all this geometry. Then we can do is, uh, Volume to mesh, mesh to volume, other way around. And we're gonna say amount, uh, it's too much. And now we have this kind of slime effect pretty easily, right? It's touching the surfaces, which looks good. It's coming out of the cube, I like it. And then we're gonna do set shade smooth, boom. And then if we push play, it will go very slowly, frame to frame. So we have all of this right here, which is essentially turning our mesh to a volume and remeshing it. So let's just say remeshing the goo. So we're looking good. Now all we really need to do is add a material and then we're good to go. So let's do Set material. Let's add a new one. Let's say goo. Goo. Boom. So I found the easiest way of doing a quick goo material. Green, obviously. Let's just add here. Let's go to Eevee. Let's add ray tracing. High quality normals. Transparent. Uh, uh, uh. Nice. And then what we're gonna do, did I join it all in here? No, it should be separate. Why is, I guess this is also set to be the goo material. That's okay. So then we're gonna do transmission, pull it all the way up. We're gonna add some lights, point, let's say a hundred. There, got a few lights. Transmission, and then the specular was also nice to have. I was playing around with it before. So if we add kind of a bluish purple, it's a good contrast with the green because they're on the opposite sides. They're they're good complements. And then crank up this stuff. Who cares? This is the basic material. And if you do a little render, Control Alt Zero sets the camera to where you're looking at. 
and then we kind of have this little blobby look. So that's the basic effect. Uh, obviously you can go a lot deeper to make it cooler or whatever. Um, yeah, so hope you guys felt like you learned something. 